Hey guys, by Rachel Tiffany here. I'm back. Let's pretend it hasn't been about five minutes. Um, okay. <sighs> Wish me luck with this one, guys. Um, I don't even know how to begin this, but I'm gonna just start somewhere. <sighs> um, on the comments about Mulatto Diaries number 32, M-U-N-7-0-0-1, said something like the video made sense and it's that psychological conditioning that's hard to break through um, talking about my friend that even though we've had many conversations about my dad being white and my mom being black when I said oh that guy reminds me of my dad I was looking around for a black guy even though there was really only one person in the room and he was white so um yeah, that psychological conditioning is incredibly hard to break through. Um, I'm most concerned about breaking my own psychological conditioning. Um, and I, I certainly do hope that through these videos of mine and many other people's that we can break the psychological conditioning of the country um, and the world. But we've got problems here so let's focus on them I guess um, this just sort of goes to prove that point I think um, as I've let the cat out of the bag that I watched of you and um, Barbara Walters has mentioned many times that although she has dyed her hair blonde for years if someone asks her what color hair she has she her instinct is to say, I'm a brunette, and if anyone was to ask her that for some reason, she would say, I'm a brunette, because she's a natural brunette, and, you know, she must have lived with brown hair for, I'm going to go with a good 18 years, but I don't really know when she started dyeing her hair, but, you know, she still thinks of herself that way, that's how she sees herself on the inside, and I'm thinking, like, if this is something that you can look in the mirror every day and see proof um, otherwise that that psychological conditioning must be really freaking hard to break especially when we talk about things that people don't talk about much people don't look in the mirror and see the ways that they're the same as someone who looks different from them so I really appreciate you uh, M U N seven zero zero one saying that in that way because it's just like yeah it's the psychological conditioning and that is what I'm hoping that we can break through. So that being said, my next bit of the history of mulattoes is the infamous Willie Lynch letter. Now I have recently read that this letter could not possibly be real. Um, if you would like to read that, um, there's a website called blackvoices.com and if you look up Willie Lynch Black Urban Legends, um, this person, it's been a while since I read it and I don't even remember really if I thought I agreed or not, sorry, but um, it's like the Willie Lynch letter is a fake and why do people buy into that? And regardless of if there was a real, real Willie Lynch who stood on the riverbanks and said this to white slave owners regardless of whether or not that happened like the the stuff that's talked about in that letter seems to have uh, been implemented in the the uh, breaking in of the slaves and keeping them slaves. So here we go. 1712, white slave owner Willie William Lynch delivers a speech on the bank of the James River in Virginia. This speech outlines his foolproof method for controlling your black slaves and guarantees that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. He suggests taking the differences between the slaves and exaggerating them, like pitting the light-skinned slaves against the dark-skinned slaves. Now, there's much more to the letter than that, and I, I hope that people read it, because it's deep. 
Uh, you know, I, I only included that little bit about pitting the light-skinned slaves against the black, uh, the dark-skinned slaves because it it speaks to sort of the relations within the African American community between mulattoes and quote unquote monoracial African Americans. It's very interesting to me that that he says it it will control the slaves for at least three hundred years and this he said this in seventeen twelve, so it seems to me that we're coming up on the 300 year anniversary and uh, maybe maybe we can break some of these psychological strongholds you know there are a lot of people talk about how even though emancipation was long ago there's still slavery in America and I don't mean you know, the unfortunate incidents where there are literally people being held as slaves, but I, I mean the conditioning, the mentality that many African Americans live with or under unconsciously. And I don't, I don't have a clue how to begin to undo that other than to just start talking about these things honestly. Um, it's just really a tough situation. Uh, and I, I guess I'm at a loss for words right now. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess, stop talking about that. And hopefully through people's comments and through some further reflection of my own and um, I'll be able to to talk about it more articulately at a later date. Um, HMH with something in the middle and then CEO, I believe, is the last bit of your username. Thank you so much for uh, bringing it up that, yeah, Obama might not be the first black president. Um, supposedly, along with Andrew Jackson, as you listed, um, Jefferson, everyone talks about that, but they pretty much talk more about him fathering children that were black than him perhaps being of mixed ancestry himself, but he's on the list of the five. Lincoln, Harding, and Coolidge uh, round out the list. There is on diversityinc.com an article called Obama Wouldn't Be the First Black President by Aisha Hussein, H-U-S-S-A-I-N, if you want to read that. Um, it just pretty much, you know, these people had rumors plaguing, plaguing them <laughs> um, throughout their political careers that they were actually, well, actually had a drop of black blood, which would have legally made them black, so it's interesting. Um... Okay, one more thing I want to address quick, quickly. I'm sorry, the time's gone by so fast. I'm talking really slowly today because, I don't know, I guess this is the crux of the situation, and it's harder to talk about than the, you know, hair. But, Shy town you asked me, are men more open-minded uh, to dating outside of their race, or are women more open-minded? And I don't know. I can say that we certainly see more black men and white women um, as interracial couples and you know I guess are you saying of the minority minority or of the majority like are white women more open to it than white men and I would say probably yeah because the way I see it the world it's a white man's world and if the world is created for you to sort of navigate through and move through easily and have the best of everything. And I'm certainly not saying every white man has a perfect, wonderful, rich, lovely life. But it is set up that way for it to be easiest for you white men to achieve that. So really, why would you... Uh, I just think... It, oh, it's so hard to say this. 
I don't think of it as a demotion, clearly, but I'm just saying, like, if, if you could have everything and everything that everyone leads you to believe is so wonderful as white and blonde hair and blue-eyed and whatever, that's easily available to you. You might not even think to look for something different, something new, like that movie. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I'm totally running out of time. Maybe I make a new video, another video today as a continuation of this, or maybe we just wait till Thursday and I'll have some clearer thought. So yeah, I think that's the plan. But I'm going to go with in the white race anyway. I think white women are more open to dating outside of their race than white men. That's just a guess. Totally a guess. Thanks for watching.